guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over this great comeback story, or great payback story, if you will, that was sent from a subscriber. This is from a guy, he sounds like he's in his early 40s, and he shares his story about how his wife, after he'd been married to her many years, had two kids, teenage kids, out of nowhere, admits to him that she'd been cheating on him for a year, and that she wants to end the marriage because she no longer feels the butterflies anymore, no excitement, none of that stuff, and uh, was leaving him for a younger man. And as you can imagine, this guy obviously was torn apart. He handles it not the best way in the beginning, but eventually the guy starts to become R-pilled. And he does an abrupt change where he starts focusing on her and the pain and all that and starts turning his life around, doing better, and to no surprise, things don't go too well for her. Where then he's moving up and she's moving down. And eventually you're going to see all this drama and turmoil that's going to sound so similar to different types of stories. But ultimately this guy has the last laugh and he's doing great. Meanwhile, she's furious because she wants him back, but this guy ain't having it. And he's moving on to women much younger than her, prettier than her and all that. And the kids want to be with him, not her. So this goes to show you guys how guys can go through hell, but can turn things around by gaining this knowledge, focusing on their purpose, focusing on themselves, making themselves better, etc., etc. And also, guys, you're going to see here a lot of important lessons in the story as well as the entertainment factor. So, jumping into it, he says, uh, Hello, SSM. So I just want to say that I'm a big fan of your work. I've been following you since 2020 and stuck around ever since. Bro, thank you very much for your support. That's when I started in February 2020, and I was just goofing around, and I never thought it would take off like this. So I appreciate your support. I, during that time, I started taking the RP knowledge, and I related to your content the most. I've been thinking of emailing you for a long time now about my situation, but hesitated as my story was just the usual run-of-the-mill wife leaves husband to be a 304. But recent events have got me thinking of writing you. Apologies for any errors. English is not my mother tongue. Dude, you wrote this better than people whose English is their mother tongue. So good work. Uh, backstory. So my wife, let's call her Amber. She's 38 back then and I'm was 40 and i 43 now. Left me back in 2017. Like all your stories, it started out great. And honestly, she was my best friend. We had had two teenage kids together, a 13-year-old male and 15-year-old female then. Now the boy's 18 and the girl's 20. Amber was the one who wanted to have a family and be a mother at such a young age. I agreed, and after we graduated college and got hitched immediately. Smack! I know you know this now, dude, but get married right out of college? Are you out of your damn mind? What life experience do you have? Do you have any money? How established are you in your career? How well do you know her? I mean, the list goes on and on. For you guys who watch me regularly, you know what I'm saying here. That's way too young. Nowadays, guys got to be close to more like uh, 30 before even considering getting hitched. I was just talking to someone the other day. This guy's almost 60 years old. Two guys, actually. And, I, and they have, the one guy has daughters that are in college. And I say, in your opinion, what's a good age to get married? He goes, 35. See? He knows. Anyhow, uh, then one night she confessed that she was having a year-long affair with a younger co-worker and wanted to end things with me. Oh, man. Talk about a smack in the face. It's bad enough. Now the blue, you, what you thought was a great marriage, she wanted to end it with you, but that for a year, she's been effing some other dude. It hit me out of nowhere, but at least she was honest with me about it. There was no honesty going on. She was cheating on you for a year, and there's no way you got the full story. I, there's no way I buy that, especially knowing what I know, having read your story and all. Uh, she told me how her lives had gotten a bit too boring and that she needed an adventure again. She still loved me, but couldn't live with the, the guilt of cheating or staying in a loveless marriage. She told me that she was, hasn't been happy in a long time, and this new man gave her the, wait for it, butterflies while she resented me for holding her back. Hearing those words from Amber actually broke me inside and it left me broken for a long time. So this is an example, guys, and I gotta pause this part of the video and, and say this. This is one of the many reasons I'm anti-marriage, or at the very least, anti-most marriages. Because even if a couple can actually have a good time together and all that, or they start off in the right place, eventually they get bored. Okay, they, they know everything there is to know about the other person, 
And in many cases, each party starts letting themselves go, usually physically. They stop making the effort. goes both ways, men and women. They stop dating the other person. They stop having fun together. And they then make it all about the kids, right? And then when the kids eventually leave the house, they got nothing left. And that's when they typically divorce. So if anybody has a prayer, if they're married, of making it work, you got to keep it new or it's through. That's saying you got to keep going out and doing stuff, having a good time, taking care of your body, staying healthy. I mean, it's not fair if the one guy is working out and going to the gym and she lets herself blow up like the freaking Goodyear blimp or vice versa. That type of thing. Otherwise, it gets boring. But the whole butterfly crap, which he's talking about here, that doesn't last forever with anybody. I don't care who it is. But these women think that if they can get that and it will last forever with the next guy. Chad and Tyrone bad boys will give her the uncertainty and butterfly she craves. But Chad and Tyrone ain't going to be a good boyfriend or husband, as you're about to see. So I just got to mention that part. Okay. Uh, the divorce was pretty clean. We had a prenup with the insistence of my aunt and cousin long ago, which led me to keep most of my assets and just pay her for half of the house and a small lump sum of money. Uh, back then, I will admit that I was a weak man, and every chance I had to talk to Amber, I did, and became like her emotional punching bag. Every time her and her new man fought, I'd be there to comfort her and console her. But deep down, I knew she would never go back to me. Smack. So you were that guy. You were like that friend when you were younger who liked a girl. She wasn't interested in that guy, but she was there to tell him all her problems. And he would drop everything he was doing to go over there and listen to her cry about some other guy that, that is nailing her. Right? That, that's what you became. And I know why you did it. You did it in the hopes that if you showed that you cared so much and you were such a good guy that she'd see the error of her ways and come back to you. That, that I guarantee is what you're hoping. Many of us have done this shit. I did that crap back in the day. And you think it got me the girls that I liked? Nope. Not at all. They went back to hooking up with Chad and Tyra and I was left feeling like an idiot. But I learned. Don't do that, guys. <clears throat> So, slowly, I decided to pick myself up and start to focus on myself. Good, bro. That is the key. It all really started at work when one of my coworkers got me into a certification program with our new network and software. I didn't have the time to talk to Amber when I was doing it, and then I started to feel at peace. I had a sudden realization that if I was being anchored down by her. Uh, the process was slow, but ever since that realization, I started to remove her from my life. Notice that two things. When he started distancing himself from her, he was starting to feel peace. Imagine that. And two, purpose. He was focusing on himself. An opportunity came to advance in his company or, or whatever the hell it is. And he focused on that. All of a sudden, he's feeling better. Purpose, gentlemen. Purpose is everything. Goals, ambitions. That thing you have a passion for that you want to better yourself in. When you find that thing, I t I'm guarantee you guys, when you find that thing, nothing else matters. All the other crap that would normally bother you, you don't care because you so love focusing on that purpose, chasing your ambitions and goals. You feel amazing. You feel alive. You think about that the first thing you get up in the morning and you think about it the last thing before you fall asleep at night because you're so tired from focusing on your purpose. All of a sudden, all that bullshit that bugged you ain't going to bother you anymore. You know, my purpose is YouTube. This is why I crank out two to three videos a day and I'm expanding and expanding. I fucking love what I do. All the other shit in the world pff, doesn't bother me at all. Find your purpose, guys, and nothing else will bother you. Nothing else will break you down. Okay, had my little pep talk there. My kids didn't really take the divorce well at first. They first lived with their mother, but after a year living with her, they moved back in with me. They've been telling me that Amber's new man was horrible to them and how the relationship between him and their mother was quickly deteriorating. Imagine that. Her chatter Tyrone younger boyfriend is exactly stepdaddy material. And by the way, if he's being horrible to them, I would come on, I would nail her like a ton of bricks for her allowing that to happen. And him, I might add. I had, been, I had seen signs of their split from my talks with Amber, but seeing how it affected my kids hit me very differently. I got them into counseling soon and after they moved back in, in, and eventually things got back to some kind of normalcy, but the kids had already begun to sour on Amber. Amber soon noticed that me and the kids had stopped talking to her over the phone and also sending texts, so she decided to send me an email asking if everything was all right. No, ex-wife, everything is not all right because you ruined our marriage. Okay, okay, fine, you weren't happy, but you, we could have talked about it. Try to, you could at least, if you truly weren't happy in the marriage, we could have divorced amicably without you cheating on me and all that. 
but then you're exposing our kids to this jackass. No, things aren't all right. And no, I don't want to talk to you because you're poison. That's why I'm not talking to your ass. I only told her that I was busy and to only contact me if it was about the kids. She agreed, but called me a rude a-hole for being so straightforward with her. But then later she apologized, saying that she's not used to me being indifferent towards her. Translation, you're acting different. Indifferent. And you don't care anymore. You're not, not taking her crap. You're no longer her uh, punching bag. That guy who listens to all her problems. And knows she called you an a-hole. When women call you an a-hole, you're doing something right, guys. Because notice the bad boys, they always they think they're a-holes, but yet they're drawn to them. On multiple occasions, Amber has asked me to become friends with her again. Pfft, fat chance, honey. Like the old times, just without the marriage. But I always decline to tell her that I don't think it would be a very good idea. The kids did have a rebellious phase against Amber, but eventually they did forgive her. Eventually, Amber and her boyfriend broke up after three years, and I believe that this is also the time wherein she realized what she had thrown away. She confided with our oldest that she missed us, our whole family in general, and that her affair was something akin to drug addiction and she apparently beaten that she apparently beaten bs in my opinion what a load of crap her that whole thing was oh the equivalent of a drug addiction she was addicted to the uh the high of uncertainty with the guy and the butterflies and all that bullshit but oh she's beating it now now i'm willing to take you back and the kids we can all pretend like it never happened bullshit you make your bed you lie in it honey have some accountability but we all know the joke about them and accountability. According to my oldest, Amber was addicted to the high that the affair gave her, and she heavily regrets breaking apart her family. Okay, let's just say for argument's sake, she does regret it. Too late. It's done. Move on. Unbeknownst to me, this is also when Amber started to plant seeds in our kids' heads about reuniting the family. However, Amber had a lot of pride. I believe she went after Chad's in the carousel, hoping to get them to marry her before trying her hand with me again. Of course she tried to get Chad's on the carousel to marry him, but what these gals never, ever get, that the carousel, Chad's and Tyrone's, they don't get married. They don't settle down. They may temporarily be in a semi-relationship with him. They ain't going to be the stepdad. They're not going to get her the house in the suburbs, the white picket fence. Good luck if Chad or Tyrone even have a job. Good luck if Chad or Tyrone can even read. <clears throat> During this time... Our kids were about 18 and 16, and the pandemic had hit. Luckily, I was able to keep my job, and my children went on their days as usual while transitioning to online learning. For the first half of the year, I didn't hear a peep from Amber, probably because she was in the carousel lifestyle at the time. Until out of nowhere, she showed up at my house. I was a bit shocked at first, but she requested to spend more time with the kids, and I agreed as long as she leaves me alone. She should not be showing up unannounced to your house. You're divorced. You're not talking to her for a reason. She can go see the kids on her own time, in my opinion, not coming over to your house. He says, I know, I know, I should never let her back in my house, but back then I didn't know the, what her plans were, and I thought that my kids need a mother in their lives. Yes, the kids need a mother in their lives, not necessarily an unstable one like her, but uh, your gut should have known better. Don't let her in your house. She has reason. She has motives. At this point, I was already deep in the R pill and started to watch her videos, and I saw the signs of her trying to get me back. She wore the clothes that I found attractive, always cooked my favorite meal, made flirty comments, etc. If she'd done this whole act back in 2017 to 2018, it would have worked and I would have remarried her on the spot. But since I was R pilled, I just ignored everything she did and did not once touch any of the meals that she had cooked me. He says in parentheses, I gave it to the neighbor so I wouldn't waste it. Then one day, Amber confronted me about my attitude towards her, how I was being an a-hole, and it wasn't fair that she was the only one trying to be friendly amongst the kids. Not fair? How about the fact that it was not fair that after all the years of marriage, you were cheating on me for a year? How about the fact that it wasn't fair that you were doing with a freaking scumbag? How about it wasn't fair that you were um, using me to be your therapist while you were still banging Chatter Tyrone? How about it wasn't fair that you ripped my heart out and didn't care? And how about it's not fair that I moved on my life like I should, and now that Chad and Tyrone aren't in the picture, now all of a sudden you want me back. Don't give me this unfair crap. And not to mention you exposing the children to douchebags like that. You make your bed in your light, get the fuck out. I only told her that the kids were young adults and I was friendly, but I didn't want to interact much with her since she said I was holding her back. Remember she said that. 
Amber then tried to argue with me, and she tried the whole waterworks thing by crying while backpedaling her statements from years ago by saying, you misunderstood me, or it was never like that. Guys, I've said this countless times, and I'll say it again. Never argue with a woman. You're not going to get anywhere, because they're going to twist things around and get emotional and cry and yell and throw shit at you and gaslight you and all that crap. you got to stay calm, not get sucked into their emotional tantrum and just stay calm and act like it doesn't affect you. Don't give them ammo to twist around at you and walk away. Or in this case, tell her to leave. And of course the waterworks are coming because that is the last line of defense. She also mentioned how my Greystone method approach, approach and indifference towards her made her feel angry and confused. Well, last time I checked, the bad boys make gals angry and confused, and they're drawn to the bad boys. So imagine that she's feeling drawn to this guy because he's acting like one of them. By the end of that argument, she literally ran out of things to say. She tried to bait me into an emotional rant, but I stayed strong. And then she made a dramatic exit by saying, I'm not throwing us away. You are. Then she slammed the door shut. See, he didn't get, he didn't let her bait him. And I'm sure it was hard because if somebody's throwing a fit and yelling and screaming and all that, we, you all know what I'm talking about. You feel your blood boiling and you just want to lash out back at them and it's warranted. But if you did with a woman, it's not going to work. You got to be as calm as can be, keeping that center. Otherwise, it's like, it's like arguing with a child. Uh, despite Amber saying that she visited the house with the kids, she didn't show up anymore after the incident. Thank the Lord. Uh, then I had talked with the kids about it, and basically they told me that Amber wanted us to try again. How it could be like one of her soap opera TV shows. A couple weeks later, my eldest told me that, she, that their mother didn't take the incident well and was asking if I could speak to her uh, properly like an adult instead of being a cruel, indifferent man-child. Her words, not mine. Cruel, indifferent man-child? Well, how about her acting like a cruel, indifferent woman-child? And putting him through all that, and putting the kids through all that, and her actions. She is like a big baby. And yeah, like this is like a freaking soap opera. I just told my eldest that I wouldn't be speaking towards her and that I don't want to hear about her anymore. My eldest agreed and I haven't heard about anything about Amber for the rest of the year, except for Christmas where she sent me a card. I'm glad you laid down the law with your kids explaining this is what's going on. I don't want to talk about your mother anymore. Do not bring her up. Because otherwise they're going to keep bringing this shit up. Uh, so fast forward to now, I'll admit that even after what Amber had done to me, I'm still a relationship guy. I'm aware that not all women are like Amber, just the majority of them. Yeah, I will agree with you, not all are like them, but the majority are. And But even the better ones are going to have qualities that I do talk about in this channel, so you must be prepared. You must keep your eyes peeled. It's only a very small percent that are actually traditional and old school and are actually a decent human being anymore. It, it's really sad. And they are out there, but it's rare. And But even then, if you start acting like a, like a pussy, acting like a bitch, putting them on a pedestal, kissing their butt, you'll turn them off. And these are the good ones. I'm currently dating a half Vietnamese woman who will call Min, a 28-year-old female. 28. And you, my man, are early to mid 40s. You stud. We just started dating and we hit it off good. I'm not rushing into anything and I have told her that I am not interested in marriage without a prenup and at least five years of five years of dating minimum. And she has no problem with it, so I'm hoping it works out. Yes, at the very least, five years and prenup. But bro, given what you've been through, why do you feel like you need to get married one day? I mean, I know you're leaving this as the possibility, but seriously, what's that going to do, right? You don't get married and you just continue to see each other. She's always going to be chasing after your validation. She's always going to be trying to work to get you to commit. And while she's doing that, she's treating you like the king. That's how it works. But the second you give them certainty, the second you get hitched, that's where things will start to become predictable and boring and things could go down the same path as you did before. You have no reason to change a good thing you got going right now. I don't want to see you get into the same situation before. And mark my words, life will present, put you in situations like the past to test and see if you learned anything. Some people think that's a bunch of ridiculous nonsense, but it happens. And it will again. And you may find the situation may come one day, bro, where she's going to want a deeper commitment, or she's going to want children, and pretty much say, either you give me that, or I'm walking. And you're going to be tested to see how strong you are 
how strong your resolve is in this issue. I don't want to see you end up caving to this and being unhappy down the road. So really think about that if that comes down, down one day. Anyway, I told my kids about Min and never really showed her around or forced them to have a relationship with her. But during my birthday, I brought her along to a dinner with some friends and my kids. It all went well and my kids got along great with her. Awesome. That's great to hear, Matt. You deserve this. I want you to be happy after all the shit you've been through. Have a great time with your younger girlfriend. Enjoy that young uh, you-know-what, but just be careful. After my birthday, I let Min stay around the house sometimes since my place is closer to her office. She still goes back to her apartment every weekend as a test to see how we coexist. I thought that life was finally getting better for me until, you guessed it, I got an angry phone call from Amber. Gee, I wonder what she's mad about. She called me through a burner phone, and since I deal with new clients on the regular, I thought she was one of them. She called me a disgusting pig for dating someone half my age and how this was a bad influence on the kids. Bad influence? Dad's happy? Dad's having a good time after what dad went through? That's a bad influence on the kids? I know who's a bad influence on the kids. How about the mom that ruined the family? How about the mom that cheated on not just the dad but also the kids for a year? Dated a scumbag, exposed the kids to the scumbag so much so the kids had to go to therapy. Uh, What else can we add to the list? Use dad, drama central, blah, blah, blah. That is someone that is a bad influence on the kids, not this guy. This just gets keep getting better and better. Well, not, not better and better, but you know what I mean. <clears throat> I just hung up the phone without saying anything to her. Smart. I asked my kids and friends if any of them told Amber, but they all said they didn't. I was confused at first how Amber could have found out until I noticed that Min was in my latest cover photo on Facebook. It was a group picture of us drinking, a group picture of us during dinner. So my theory is that Min, that she saw Min on my profile and, and stalked her online. I believe Min posts our pictures on her private Instagram. Well, block your freaking ex-wife from your Facebook and Instagram, what other things you're connected to. She's your ex for a reason. So that leads me to today. Amber is being bitter about me being in a relationship with Min. She's been talking trash behind my back. She's also been messaging Min insults and whatnot. There was this one insult that sounded very offensive, and Min has been contemplating sending it to Amber's workplace, HR. My Ellis is going to have a talk with her mother to hopefully resolve the issue, but I'm not sure if Amber is going to relent. Right now, I'm just enjoying what life offers me, but my ex-wife is being a bitter piece of shit. If you read this far, thank you, SSM. I just want to share my story with you and what's happening with me now. Have a great day, and if something does happen, I might send you an update. Thanks. Bro, I guarantee you, more is going to happen. And so, by all means, please send an update, because this is quite a story. And guys, for those of you who have stuck around this long, if you'd like to hear an update to this guy's story, share in the comments section. You all, know how, you all know the drill by now. If you request an update, if there's one, the guys will send it. So definitely comment away and let this guy know you want an update if you like the story. So bro, I'm going to jump around here, but with regards to your girlfriend right now, if your ex-wife is harassing her through social media, tell her to take snapshots of all her nasty, insulting comments, save them to her phone, and then block her and then make a complaint, whether it be Facebook or Instagram, whatever, showing proof that this user on there is harassing her, and maybe they can uh, put her in Facebook jail or Instagram jail or, or deactivate her account or something, because it's warranted. And if things continue worse, again, she has proof that she could probably make a restraining order against her. You may uh, say, I don't want to do that because of the kids. No, she needs to fucking learn. Like I said again before, I'm, I'm really proud of how you made this comeback. This is great. I'm sorry what happened. You went through hell, but you did a great job by eventually focusing on your purpose with your job, focusing on you, distancing yourself from her, and look how you're doing. My recommendation is, it sounds like you're about my age. I'm 44. I'm guessing you're mid-40s. Dude, 40s are the best time of my life, and they should be yours too. So keep doing what you're doing, focusing on you. Uh, stay healthy, stay exercise, do all this. So you can feel, you, you take care of your body, your body will take care of you, and have a great time with your kids, your new girl. But back, like I said earlier, I know you're having fun with her. I know she's 28, and she's got that 28-year-old body, and she's hot, and she makes you feel young. Don't fall in the mistake of rushing any, anything. You should not, okay? And you will be tested to see... If one day you make the same mistakes you did before, okay? Don't let that happen because if she's 28, 30 is right around the corner. And what's the number all women fear the most? 30. 
And if they're not on the way to the altar by 30, or at least have a ring on their finger or something like that, they get antsy. And that's where ultimatums come out of nowhere and things like that. So be aware that could happen down the road. And not just to you, sir, but anybody else in a situation like this that's dating a younger woman who's coming up on 30. If you think that, oh, not them, they don't want to get married, bullshit. They all do eventually. So just keep that in mind. Or want to have kids and you get the point. And they may pull the ultimatum nonsense or some other thing like I got, I'm walking away if you don't do this. You have to be able to stand strong and call their bluff. And there's no need honestly to get married, man. I mean, unless it's like a religious thing for you or something. But other than that, Keep doing what you're doing. Have a good time because often when people eventually get married, in a matter of time, just the, the really good thing they had before, whoosh, gone. You don't need that. So hopefully you'll learn. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think. Let him know. Give him a high five for making a good comeback here. And also let him know if you want to see any updates if it comes down the road. I guarantee you with this wacko ex-wife of yours, it ain't over. And by the way, I'm sure you all picked, noticed his life is going on up. Her life is going down. And obviously, she's older now, early 40s. She's not as appealing anymore as before. Now she wants this guy back because the young Chad and Tyrone's, even though they had that whole cougar fun, it's over now. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.